Hey now, today we're gonna take a look at Mass Effect Risk, or I should call it officially Risk Mass Effect Galaxy at War Edition. And yes, I know I'm breaking the cardinal rule, you never wear the shirt of the band that you're going to see. You never wear the shirt of the board game you're reviewing. Who cares, I, I like this shirt anyway. So, <laughs> uh, so this is Risk. I'm sure you all know Risk in some way, shape, or form. You either played it when you're young, or you're still playing it now in the form of the really good uber version of Risk, Risk Legacy, a game that I really love. But this is Risk, and it has the Mass Effect theme. Risk has been rethemed into a million, billion different things. Same thing with Monopoly. There's, I Actually, there was some I didn't even know about. There's Risk Metal Gear Solid. There's Risk Battlefield. I mean, there's just a lot of version of Risk. I reviewed Risk Plants vs. Zombies, and much to my shock, it is my most viewed video by far. I'm sure because of the Plants vs. Zombies Association, not the Risk part. Or maybe the two of them in conjunction. I don't know. But what this is... Uh, there's two different game modes. You have the normal game mode of Risk, which is very, very similar to normal Risk. There's like, just the cards are different. That's about it. But you also have an extra, the Galaxy at War mode, wh which has more of the actual Mass Effect flavor. It's a team game. You have the Alliance versus the Reapers. This is uh, based on Mass Effect 3, by the way. Um, so I guess there's some spoilers ahead. I don't know. Probably not. You probably play If you're going to play it at all, you probably played it by now, but... Uh, you've got the Alliance versus the Reapers, and also if you have enough players, five players, you also have one player as Cerberus. Uh, so it could be, a, it's two on two on one if you have five players. And uh, each one has, everyone's got their own victory condition, The and it's all thematic to the game. So the Reapers are trying to wipe out the Alliance. Uh, the uh, the Alliance is trying to find the Catalyst in order to activate the Crucible and kill all the Reapers. And Cerberus is just doing what Cerberus does and being selfish and just trying to take strategic victory, uh, strategic like strongholds across the galaxy, which isn't that thematic to the game, but whatever. Uh, so that's basically it. But even with that mode, it's still essentially Risk with some pretty significant changes. But how significant? How different is it from Risk? Is it different enough for people that don't typically like Risk? Because Risk does have a bad reputation aside from Risk Legacy. Uh, and how much does it appeal to Mass Effect fans? Well, I played it a couple of times. Let's go ahead and do a brief overview. Then we're going to come back and I'll give you my final opinion. Okay, I'm going to give you a brief overview of Mass Effect Risk the Galaxy at War Edition. Now, uh, I'm not going to go any over any of the basic rules of Risk. I mean, Risk is a very simple game. I'm sure most people who are watching this have played it before or know of it, and you can easily get the rules. I just want to go over some of the extra stuff that comes in this edition of Risk and the extra little add-ons and bonuses that give it that Mass Effect flavor. So this is the map, and you'll see that it matches up with the Galaxy map if you've ever played the Mass Effect board games. Uh, so each, it's, but essentially it's still the same thing as any other Risk board because it's broken down into regions, uh, different colored regions, and you're still trying to take control of a region in order to get bonus troops at the beginning of each turn in addition to your standard troops. Uh, I'm not going to place that on the minis either, but uh, this is essentially a team version of Risk, depending on how you play it. It's going to be Alliance, Reapers, and Cerberus. The Cerberus player is always going to be either by himself and, and only used in a five-player game, or the Cerberus player is going to be a neutral faction that goes out on the board in games with less than five players. The other players of the game are either going to be the Reapers or the Alliance. So the Alliance has two different colors and two different types of troops. You have the uh, light blue and the dark blue. So here are some examples of the light blue pieces here. And so for your little three denomination units, you have the Mako tanks, which was everyone's favorite part of Mass Effect 1, I'm sure. And then just these little uh, very generic looking Alliance troopers. And here are the, uh, the dark blue versions of those as well. Reapers is basically the same thing. You have the... Uh, you have the red or crimson, and then the, I don't know, burgundy, I guess. But uh, here's the little three denomination. I forget what you call these guys for the Mass Effect 3. And by the way, this is, for what little theme there is in this game, it's based off of Mass Effect 3 more than the others. And there's a little uh, husk creature. And then here are the, uh, the burgundy analogs of that. Uh, there you go. Little guy right there. And then finally, Cerberus. Oh, I'm sorry. I almost forgot the most important part. Each of the Reaper factions also has Harbinger, which is one of the actual Reapers from the games. And 
I, this is the coolest part of the game, hands down. I'm just going to say that right now. I love the Reaper miniatures, and you also come with uh, this version here. Um, one of these is actually going to be placed on this War Momentum track, which I'll get to in a minute. The other one is actually going to go out on the board, which, again, I'll get to in a moment. But finally, the Cerberus minis, which actually are probably my favorite of all of them. Um, you have the little Cerberus trooper, a little orange guy there, and... Uh, then the Atlas mech. I love that. I just love that. <laughs> I'd like to repurpose. I'd like to repurpose all of these into Risk Legacy, perhaps, which is a much better version of Risk. Spoiler alert. Uh, <laughs> so once everyone's chosen their faction, you're going to populate the map the same way that you do in normal Risk until all the planets are taken. Each faction has a different goal. If you're the Reapers, your goal is to wipe out all the Alliance troops. If you're the Alliance, your goal is to find the Catalyst. During the Reapers' turns, they have these uh, Vanguard tokens. Now, on four of these five Vanguard tokens, you have a very blurry, hard-to-make-out picture of a Reaper. Um, and so, you know, the, on the Reaper turns, they're going to put these out randomly face down. Um, the one that the Alliance is looking for is this, which is the Catalyst, which has to do with the ending of Mass Effect 3. I won't uh, spoil that for you. But when you attack a spot that has... Uh, one of these Vanguard tokens, it's much more difficult to take it over for the Alliance or Cerberus. Cerberus can do this as well. Um, that player, the, the defending Reaper player, gets to upgrade their defense dice, where they're, they're rolling one or two, into the, uh, I guess it would be the black dice, into these D8. So it's much harder to take that spot. And if, But if the Alliance does take it, two things happen. Again, they get to flip it over and find out whether it was a Reaper or the Catalyst. If it's the Catalyst, you win the game automatically. But whether it is or not, you also get to move the War Momentum track. Now, the War Momentum track is for the Alliance and the Reapers. The farther over it is to either side, that side of the game, that team, is going to get bonuses. If it's closer to the Reaper side, then Harbinger, who the Reapers are going to get to move around, is going to be tougher to attack, and uh, you're gonna, they're going to get bonus Reaper cards every time they take over a planet. Every time they take over a planet, you get, much like in the other versions of Risk, you're going to get one of the cards corresponding to your faction, but if it's over, if it's farther to the Reaper side, you get extra cards. Same thing with the Alliance. It's easier to attack Harbinger, and you get to take an extra card. Or possibly, if you go all the way to the end, you get two extra cards, and you get increasing bonuses to attack or defend Harbinger, depending on what side that you're on. Now, the thing about Harbinger is, the Reapers get to move him around every turn by rolling a die and roll and move. Surprise! <laughs> and Harbinger makes a planet impenetrable to attack. You cannot attack any planet in any system where Harbinger is. You, if you're going to attack at all, you must attack Harbinger there. And Harbinger is very, very difficult to destroy. You have to roll uh, roll your dice and try to get 18. Roll the three attack dice, uh, if you're attacking with three troops, and try to get an 18, which is very, very difficult to do. But you can use cards that are gonna give you bonuses. And again, if you're, if you're uh, farther up the track on the Alliance, you're gonna get bonuses to hit him as well. And if you manage to destroy Harbinger, then he goes off the board, and uh, the it's much more difficult for the Reaper player at that point. I should also backtrack and mention that Cerberus has their own win condition as well. Cerberus' win condition is to take these spots that are in orange with the little Cerberus uh, marker on them. If they manage to take 10 of those spots, they're going to win the game automatically. I don't know how thematic that is to the Mass Effect universe, but there you have it. So their goal is just to take those certain spots. Um, there's a couple of other extra little things in this game. So much like in other versions of Risk, you get to turn in cards for extra troops. And that'll have that'll show you what to do uh, down here, this little part of the board. Now, you have Alliance and Reaper cards that you'll draw from. But they function mostly the same way. Now, down here at the bottom, it has the name of a ship. It'll be Carrier, Cruiser, or Dreadnought. Um, this is used in two different ways. One is that, again, it's for turning in cards for troops. So let's say you turn in three Cruiser class cards. You're going to get four troops, three carrier classes, five troops. It's just different denominations of cards. You turn in for differing amounts of troops. But instead of doing that uh, and turning in sets of cards, at the start of your turn, you may choose to build one ship. You'll discard a card, and you get to build one of the ships of that appropriate type. And then you'll put out that ship when, during your reinforcement phase when you're putting out extra troops and put it together with a contingent of troops. And it moves around and gives them a bonus. So, for instance, Cruisers lets you reroll one die until it's not a one. Dreadnoughts lets you replace a six-sided die with an eight-sided die. Um, and carriers, if I could find one, let's see, carriers add one to the highest die. So these are really, really good bonuses, especially when you're trying to attack Harbinger that you can get. But of course, the Reapers can buy ships as well. 
And so you have that option. But of course, cards also have special abilities, like in much of the modern versions of Risk. So for instance, the Crucible says, play before attacking Harbinger, add three to your total Harbinger attack roll. Uh, Spectre Operative, play when declaring an invasion, move the momentum meter one space toward the Alliance side, then add one to all of your dice for the invasion. The Reapers have their cards as well with special abilities. We are limitless. Play when turning in cards for ships. Instead of one carrier, you may trade in this card for two cruisers. You may still gain a ship with another card. Um, there's another we are limitless. We are your genetic destiny. Play at the start of your turn. Move the momentum meter one space toward the Reaper side. Uh, now there is at least one card in here where that lets for the Reapers that wherever Harbinger is, he may choose to devastate that planet, destroy it completely. You'll take one of these devastation tokens, put it out on the board. Harbinger has destroyed that planet, and no one can get anything from that spot ever again. So that can be <laughs> pretty bad depending on whose planet they choose to destroy. And that is essentially the main game. Uh, again, you can just play this like normal risk if you want without any of this extra stuff, but that's how you play the special risk version of Mass Effect. Keep going until someone has met their particular objective. There is an extra little mini game that you can choose to do called planet scanning. Now, you can actually do a special game that's on the back of the rulebook that is just using these cards. I wouldn't even bother. Why would you even bother? Uh, I don't understand. But <laughs> if you want to make it a mini game within the Mass Effect Risk game, what you do is at the beginning of the game, once each player has, uh, you've populated the map with your troops and claimed your planets, then each player is going to take the planet scanning cards that match up to, oh, I'm sorry, here are the uh, <laughs> Cerberus cards for uh, Cerberus has their own deck as well, but they do basically the same stuff. Uh, each player is going to take the asset uh, scanning cards having to do with uh, whatever planets they actually acquired during the population phase. And then during their turn, they may choose to scan the planets in order to gain more troops, essentially. So let's say that you have the Elysium planet and on your turn, you're trying to try to scan the planet. You can choose to scan one of your planets per turn. What you're going to do is you're going to take all the dice, all the d6s, all the d8s, and you're going to roll them and you're going to try to match them to the rows of these numbers here. So a 6 and a 5, a 5 and a 4, a 1, a 2, and a 3. You have to match up all of these different resources. And every time you roll the die and you're unsuccessful, you have to take away one of your unrolled, unspent die that's placed on this card. So it can be very difficult to do so. But if you manage to populate this card with all the different numbers and all these different rows, then you're going to get this number over here next to the card in assets, uh, in uh, troops. So if you successfully complete this one, you're gonna get three extra troops. Once a planet has been successfully scanned, you have to put it off to the side and it can no longer ever be scanned again because planets can actually change hands. If you take over a planet that has not been successfully scanned, you have to give that player that, um, the, the other player that you took over has to give you that uh, applicable card, but if it's already been scanned, then it means nothing. Once everyone has scanned all their planets, then you just skip that step and you don't do it anymore. But it's just an extra way for you to get more troops. Doesn't really add much to the game. That's, I know that was kind of a quick run through, but that's really the extra stuff that comes in the Mass Effect Risk Galaxy of War. Aside from that stuff, it's still risk. You're still putting out troops, invading other territories, rolling dice, hoping to get really lucky, um, trying to mitigate your luck with some of this extra Mass Effect theme stuff. That's Mass Effect Risk Galaxy at War Edition. Now, I didn't really make this clear in my intro, but I love Mass Effect. I mean, and, and, I, and I, since I was a kid, I've loved Risk. I've come to not love the normal version of Risk. But I've been very happy to try some variants like the Sublime Risk Legacy and the surprisingly decent Plants vs. Zombie Risk. Uh, and I was really hopeful that a Risk Mass Effect meld would work. Because it does make some amount of sense if you look at all the other types of Risk variants that have been out there. But one of the things I liked the most about the Risk Plants vs. Zombie was that you had the two game modes. The one mode which was essentially normal risk, except for the fact that it was two player head to head and the map was much smaller, which I thought was kind of neat actually if you're going to do the normal version of risk. But you also had the, if you flip the game board over, you had what was essentially like the Plants vs. Zombies video game that was way different than normal risk. I mean, you still had the dice rolling, but you know, you're buying tech upgrades like you do in the original video game. You've still got the zombies coming down the lanes. It felt really neat. Not like a super awesome game by any means, but really surprising that they went out of their way to make such a different mode. The problem with Mass Effect Risk is that they didn't make a mode that was drastically different. The Galaxy at War mode is, it's Risk with a couple of extra added things that don't change the game enough 
for me. Not really. Uh, but let's start back from the beginning a bit. Component-wise, I was actually pretty impressed because they Plants vs. Zombies, one of the knocks I had against it is that it was really, really cheap uh, as far as the, the board quality. The miniatures, the miniatures were super cool, but the card quality, things like that. Card quality here is still bad, but the board looks really great. It's really good quality. Um, the miniatures are even better. Those Reaper <laughs> miniatures. Uh, the two miniatures representing Harbinger are so cool. I almost want to say to pick up this game just for that if you're a Mass Effect fan. Like, I would not do that, but really like those. Um, the Cerberus and Alliance miniatures. I really love the Cerberus uh, Atlas mechs too. Really, really cool. So I can't complain about the components here. For, for Especially for... Uh, a risk variant, really good job there. Now, the thing with the gameplay, uh, again, the normal game mode is risk. If you don't like risk, normal risk with no extra frills other than the, the action cards, this is not going to change your mind at all. But let's talk about the Galaxy of War Edition, which is what you're here for. Each, ver each sect, each faction, Reaper, Cerberus, and uh, the Alliance has a different victory condition. And that's cool in and of itself. But the problem is what it essentially adds up to is still just fighting in risk style with very little things changing because i mean the alliance is who has the most to uh work for in this game or at least that's what it feels like i, I would actually argue that cerberus has it the hardest but cerberus is very very straightforward and again not too thematic to the game We're just trying to get these different strategic points that are marked on the board so it's pretty straightforward. What the Alliance has to do is this guessing game of guessing which of the tokens has the catalyst. And that's just kind of dull uh, because, you know, it, it gives you this focus to go for, but it, it makes it very, very simple. I mean, you just dump all your troops on one spot and go for that spot where the token is because you, you have a very good shot. Yes, the Reapers can do this little bluffing game of, I'm going to put a ton of troops here with one of these stronghold tokens, uh, vanguard tokens, I call them. I, I'm i going to try to bluff the alliance out and make you think that the catalyst is here. Ha 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 ha. But it doesn't matter because you're still going to go after it. Um, it's still a good spot to go after because if you do it, you get to move the momentum track, which is really less... The momentum track is way less important than it probably should be. All it really means is that you... Uh, have a better shot at taking out Harbinger, which you should never try to do. Um, but a smart Reaper player will try to put those tokens there uh, where the Harbinger is, unless, again, they're playing the bluffing game. But even so, if you have enough cards, if you have enough cruisers, you're just going to take random shots at Harbinger, especially if you've got the two players working in tandem, the teammates on the Alliance, it's not too difficult to eventually just get lucky and take him out. I mean, and again, you're just swamping troops on one spot. At a certain point, it doesn't matter. Uh, it seems really hard for the Reapers to win this. It, which surprised me, um, because the Reapers start off with such better board advantage, more troops on the board, Harbinger. You know, those seem like oh, you know, the momentum track starts on their side. Those seem like overwhelming advantages, but because. Both Cerberus and the Alliance have such narrowly focused objectives that they can work towards. They're keeping the Reapers on their toes the entire time. Um, I still think it's hardest. Uh, I mean, it's really hard for Cerberus because of having to take so many different locations and working against each other two teams. Um, although ideally, you want to have those two teams working against each other since the Reapers need to wipe out the Alliance. But uh, it's I don't know. But this all sounds like it's this complex thing where you're having these factions go against each other. But that's the problem. It's not. It's risk. <laughs> There's not enough that's different. It's. It feels like the Harbinger was wasted because you don't even get to do much with him if you don't have the right cards. The second game that we played of this, we actually Harbinger got to devastate a couple of planets, which is a fairly big deal. The first game seemed to go on longer than the second one, and they never drew the card that let Harbinger devastate a planet. Um, oh, and the planet scanning is so dumb. I don't even want to get into that. It's such a waste of time. Uh, the first game, we didn't even bother playing with it. And when we added it in the second game, like, oh, this is going to make the game better. It really didn't. It just, much like with planet scanning in the actual Mass Effect games, it just slowed things down. <laughs> so it's very thematic in that regard. 
Oh man, I was disappointed in this. I, I wanted it to be more than what it was. I suppose that I was naive in that regard. Um, but again, I had a good experience with Plants vs. Zombies. That wasn't the greatest game ever. I actually don't own the game anymore. I, I traded it away. But um, I told the person I traded it to, they were like, is this game actually good? I'm like, yeah, it's a decent game. I just have other games that do it better for me. I mean, Risk Legacy is you know a fantastic version of Risk. And for right now, apparently, it's the only version I need to have. Um, but I wanted to like this so much because of that Mass Effect theme. Actually, that's going to be the final criticism I weigh against this, is that, yes, you have these Alliance and Cerberus troops and the cool miniatures and the awesome Harbinger miniature, and you've got the Galaxy map, which looks cool the first time you pop it out like that, and you've got the logo everywhere, but that is it. I mean, Mass Effect was such a character-driven story, a story. I mean, one of the most epic stories ever. I don't care about people that complain about the ending. Regardless of that, the whole game is just this wonderful epic story that is supremely character driven and they never bother to use any of those characters. There's no cards. There's cards that kind of reference characters and situations, but why are there no, there should be leader tokens or something with actual characters in the game for each of the factions. There should, you know, the Reaper should have a leader token for um the, not Harbinger, but What's the other guy? Wasn't there another Reaper that, like, from the second... I don't remember. Maybe that was Harbinger. Um, you know, there's all these cool things and so many people on the good side. Uh, I wanted to see Morden Solace. I wanted to see the... Uh, the, um, uh, the uh, What's his name? The bad guy from Cerberus. Why am I blinking on his name at the minute? I'm wearing his shirt. Uh, the Elusive Man. Yeah, Martin Sheen. <laughs> I wanted to see Martin Sheen in this game. Why didn't they use any of those? Even in a very tangential way, character cards that do something. Um, that, again, maybe I'm being naive. I'm expecting too much out of USAopoly or Hasbro. But man, oh man, what a, they dropped the ball. They totally dropped the ball on that. That's probably the biggest heartbreak here is that they flirt with having the Mass Effect theme actually integrated in the mechanics, but it just doesn't come together. It just feels like uh, a more complicated version of Risk, faster version of Risk, and that's always a good thing, but uh, still no reason not to play Risk Legacy over this, which tells much more of a story than this does. And that's a shame because you had the story right there. You just had to use it. Oh, man. Very disappointing. I can't recommend Mass Effect Risk. My name is Nick, this has been Board Game Brawl, and I'm reminding you to get out there and game every day in every way. Take care.